ABIs are everywhere, but are you digging deep while hunting or pen testing? Like, are you checking the functionalities properly, the login and the payments whenever you see an API going through? So in this video, I'm going to talk about top 5 API vulnerabilities that you can look for. And it's going to be a pretty simple one. So we're going to talk about these top 5 vulnerabilities that you can look for along with how you can look for. And we're going to look at few reports as well for your understanding. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first one we have here is broken object level authorization. Now, the vulnerabilities that I'm going to talk about in this video are going to be OASP, API top 10 as well, but I'm just going to tell you the one that I found and that majority of the people also find as well when it's related to APIs. So first one we have is broken object level authorization, which is pretty similar to IDOR. Now you know what IDOR is, right? Indirect object reference where you can modify the ID and when you modify it, you are able to fetch other people details like other user details or modify something in their account like changing their account information or something similar. So very similar to that, we have broken object level authorization. Just the API term of it, you can say. Okay, let's look at the first report of Ola, but you can also call it IDOR. It depends because a lot of people report this one that is in API, but they call it IDOR. So like IDOR in API endpoint, but that is same thing, doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's have a look at this GitLab report on HackerOne. one so the title says IDOR in external status check api leaks data about any status check on the instance okay so this api is leaking data from a status check endpoint the api endpoint for returning approval from an external status check contains an IDOR that lets a user list information about the external status checks on GitLab instance. The feature is an ultimate feature but can be accessed by starting an ultimate trial on gitlab.com so the attack is possible with a regular account as well. Okay, means you need subscription uh, for using this feature but uh, you can use a trial account and still use this feature and that's how I think this person found the vulnerability. So this is the endpoint um, post request to projects. Here goes the ID, merge request, merge request ID, IID, and then status check responses. Now leaked information about a status check could look like the example below and could contain private project name and ID, name of status check, private address to external status check, Name and ID of protected branch connected to the status check and access rules to protected branch. Now, these are some configuration or status about the user branch and stuff. So this is how the response would look like external status check adjacent object name and then contains multiple parameters like ID name project ID and then more like branches, their information and other stuff. So yeah, it's, it's really sensitive. Now, this is steps to reproduce, create two users. Of course, whenever you're checking for Bola or IDO, you're supposed to create two users and then try to manipulate the data of another user, try to fetch the data of another user through your session and see what happens. Okay, so there's some extra details that you can check out, but yeah, you got the point. So I'm not going to spend too much time on IDOR slash BOLA reports because I'm pretty aware a lot of you already know about it and there are some of my write-ups as well. Plus I've created a video on whole IDOR vulnerability as well that you can check out from the i button. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the second one we have here is broken authentication. Now this is basic which you already see in applications that are not using APIs, but are still vulnerable to broken authentication. A broken authentication is just a category. There can be multiple things that causes broken authentication in an application. Like, uh, let's say you are able to access admin panel with default credentials. That is an example of broken authentication. Another example would be insecure password reset links, like you can predict the password reset link or the password reset link never expire, or the link is exposed in the response. I have found a bug like that and I have uh, written a write-up as well, that you can see from the description. 
Another example of broken authentication would be session, improper session management. Let's say it's using JWT tokens, but those tokens are not implemented properly, like uh, the algorithm it's using is weak or JWT is not signed or verified properly. Now, I've literally talked about multiple types of JWT attacks in my previous videos as well that you can see from the i button or from the link in the description as well. So there's a whole playlist out there. Okay, guys, let's have a look at this report for authentication bypass and it says authentication bypass leads to complete account takeover on redacted it's fine this one is reported to empty and grip but the thing here is let me read it for you real quick when an invalid email address or password is entered the web application will not authenticate the user but nevertheless it is convincible for an attacker to get around authentication and log in as anyone else leading to account takeover all you have to do is capture the request and burp so this is the post request app login and you provide the your user email and user password and then change the param value false to value true and then click send notice that icar has successfully bypassed authentication to log in as a victim without any interaction what the heck i thought this is response manipulation where change the value from false to true to bypass authentication but this is even more crazier than that what the heck just changing the value in the request and then logging into anyone's account i think developer must be high <laughs> while implementing this login functionality this is this is really crazy and it's crit i'm not sure how much bond you order for that but must be high okay there's a write-up for this as well let's open this up okay so i took over 100,000 plus user account without knowing their password part one there's a part two for it as well what the heck i have 99 plus notification i'm just checking it right now okay so we have more context here this is the request and it has the user email which is the victim email and okay same thing and then changing the parameter from false to true this is what the server responded error false wow that's amazing and then you're logged in this is a victim account okay third one we have here is excessive data exposure so excessive data exposure happens when an api returns more data than it is supposed to for example let's say there is an endpoint that is only supposed to fetch user post but it's also fetching user emails now this is a real bug and i found it and i have reported it to a program that I cannot disclose. And not just that, there are many ways of saying so. For example, there are APIs that might disclose extra payment details like account number or their geolocation or like account balance, something like that. So in that case, you have to analyze all the APIs and see what kind of response they are getting. Not just play with the request, also check the response, what kind of response you're getting does the JSON data in the response contains any extra information, any sensitive information that it should not, then you can definitely report it. Excessive data exposure example, I'm going to show you my own report. I mean the write-up, not the actual report because I cannot do that. But here is the report and you can read it as well. So the vulnerability here was, as I said, I could see the email addresses of the users in the response and it was excessive data exposure. So this is how the response looked like. It has the data that included the ID. This is the post ID, the username and the email. Not email is not allowed, of course. The created at, updated at, and role ID. All of this information were other metadata related to the post, which is normal, but that email was not. The moment I saw this, okay, I thought this is definitely excessive data exposure and then I reported this vulnerability, which got reached later. And yeah, so this was actually my first excessive data exposure and it was really fun to see it live. Because guys, I'm also a newbie, okay, I'm just finding few bugs and learning things and i'm also just talking about it on my youtube so i just find it very fun whenever i see something that i learned about and then i see it in real life so yeah 
now let's see what we have here fourth one we have is lack of rate limiting so i guess a lot of you already aware about this one in rate limiting basically you can try let's say there is a functionality where you can type in odps for 2fa now you can try thousands or two thousands of odps multiple to brute force odp and there is no red limit for example the application doesn't block your request or stops responding to your request or blocks your ipr session or whatever if it's not doing that then it is a vulnerability and it's called not red limiting now this is what happens in case of web applications but in case of apis where red limiting is a bit different it's because of the api cost like most of the apis are third parties now the application when they use those apis they are paying for it okay to send a number of requests they pay for this amount of requests let's say two dollars for one thousand requests just an example now if an attacker comes there and it sends a lot of lot of requests and it increases the cost for the company application right and the cost increases up and up and that's an issue right because the company has to pay more money now and that's why you can report this as well and that's how it's a bit different from the web ones okay now let's talk about some scenarios for rate limiting you can also call it lack of resources and rate limiting so we have this page and how you can identify if the api is vulnerable so API requests consume resources such as network, CPU, memory, and storage. And the amount of resources required to satisfy a request greatly depends on the user input. And in point business logic, also consider the fact that requests from multiple API clients compete for resources. So it means an API is vulnerable if at least one of the flowing limits is missing. And these are the limits you're talking about, execution timeouts, max allocable memory, number of file descriptors, number of processes, number of requests per client resource. So let's have a look at the first scenario we have is an attacker uploads a large image by issuing a post request to API version 1 image. So when the upload is complete, the API creates multiple thumbnails with different sizes. Due to the size of the uploaded image, available memory is exhausted during the creation of thumbnails and the API becomes unresponsive. Right, this is one basic example. Another scenario is when an application that contains user list on a UI with limit of 200 users per page. Okay, so it shows you the users and the user's limit is 200 in per page. Now the user's list is retrieved from the server using following query. So this is the API endpoint. I think this is a get request that takes two parameters, page one and size 200. An attacker can change the size parameter to 200,000, causing performance issues on the database. Meanwhile, the API becomes unresponsive and is unable to further request from this or any other clients, aka DOS. So this must be making much more sense now. You can look for such vulnerabilities. Now, this looks pretty simple. I'm pretty sure all of you must have uh, seen this functionality where something is being listed and you see the request that takes a size and the limits. Now, not just the users, you would see a request where it show you the post limits. For example, let's say there is a social media application and it shows you post, let's say 100 posts per page. Now you can change the size to 100,000 posts per page and see if the API is being unresponsive or not. And if it is, you can report it. Okay, so the next one we have here is broken function level authorization. As the name suggests, function, it means you are able to access a function without authorization or permission, you can say. So let's say there is a function in an application where, the, where only admins can see the feedbacks of other users or reviews of the other users. And other users, like normal users with same level of permission, are not allowed to see any feedbacks. And let's say you got the request where it fetches all the feedbacks, maybe documented somewhere or maybe through your recon in JavaScript files. Through that, you found it and then you send the request with your normal session cookies. And you got the response where you can see all the feedbacks. And if you are able to see that, that means it's a broken function level authorization because you don't have permission to do so, but you are able to access that admin function. Okay, 
Hope that makes sense. Now let's have a look at some scenarios for broken function level authorization. So when the API is vulnerable, the best way to find broken function level authorization issues is to perform a deep analysis of the authorization mechanism while keeping in mind the user hierarchy. What do I mean by user hierarchy? Basically, the level of permission each user has. If an application has a lot of different permissions and roles, then you have to analyze that behavior through request and responses and analyzing everything. And yeah, this you cannot do automation. In such cases, you have to do manual analysis. And that's why I always say it's very important to see things manually instead of totally relying on automation. Now, as it says, different roles or groups in the application asking for following questions. Can a regular user access administrative endpoints? Similar to the example I told you, the administrative endpoint was allowed to see user feedbacks but not normal user. So you gotta ask such questions. Now, can a user perform sensitive actions like creation, modification, deletion that they should not have access to by simply changing HTTP method? Now let's say there is an administrative functionality and only the admins can delete a user or a group. Now if a normal user is also able to delete other users or delete the group that they were invited in by the admin, then you can also call it broken function level authorization. Because as you can see, all these endpoints are APIs. Now, can a user perform X access a function that should be exposed only to users from a group Y? Now, this is something you have to be really creative about and it would depend on what sort of application you are hunting on. I found multiple broken access control and similar issues by similarly asking this question. So what my approach is, is when I'm looking at an application, I'm just telling you my experience. And if I see there are different type of user and roles, I'll ask myself, okay, I'm this user, am I able to do this? Am I able to create a role like only admins can create custom roles right but can i also create a role or can i delete a user from that group can i create my own group despite not having permission to do so asking all these questions i also note it down and then i test it one by one because we are all humans we forget right so the best way to do is just note it down and then test it one by one Okay, now let's have a look at this scenario. So we have this during the registration process for an application that allows only invited users to join the mobile application triggers an API call to get API invites and then API GUID. Now the API GUID is group ID. So basically inviting a user to a particular group. Now the response contains a JSON with details about the invite, including the user's role and the user's email. Now, an attacker duplicates the request and manipulates the HTTP method and endpoint to post slash API slash invite slash new. This endpoint should only be accessed by administrator using the admin console. Now, the endpoint does not implement function level authorization, and that's why an attacker can also send a new invite with admin privileges, and it would look like this. Later, an attacker uses a maliciously crafted invite to, in order to create themselves as admin account and gain full access to the system. As you can see how there is a little bit of chaining here. First, the attacker sent a request to invite a new user even though they shouldn't have this permission to do so because only the admins can invite user, not anyone else. Now, once they invited it, they also provided the role as admin. It means the admin can set the role whom they invite, right? Now, because any user, any regular user can also invite, they can also set the role. So there are two things that, that are happening here. Actually, the first is being able to invite another user and second is being able to set role of any user now the attacker can easily set the role to admin and get admin level privileges so this will escalate their privileges kind of like a horizontal privilege escalation and that is actually pretty critical so you're definitely getting it now how broken function level authorization works and how you can look for it Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and now you know what kind of vulnerabilities to look for in your next hunt or pen test. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section and don't forget to like and subscribe. So I'll see you in the next one.